Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I would like to thank each and every person listening to this global transmission and viewing this global transmission. I'd like to just say thank you. Uh, thanks for the support. Thanks for the subscribers. And thank you, guys uh, and girls, guys and girls. <laughs> for um you know the the support um in today's topic it may be a refresher for some people or some viewers some listeners and it may be a brand new topic for some but it is a topic that needs to be discussed and needs to be talked about and the topic that we will, or I will, inshallah, God willing, talk about today is the treatment of wives in the religion of Islam. As always, please share, 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 subscribe and share. <laughs> I can't stress it enough. Um, to start out with, the instructions, the manual, the guidance on how to treat your wife or wives, if you have more than one, it comes from the Almighty Allah or the Almighty God himself and he instructs men to treat your wives with what in the holy quran chapter 4 verse 19 he says oh the holy quran says and live with them in kindness now that sounds very simple and very easy instructions and guidance that was left to us in the Holy Quran. But as simple as it may sound or as simple as it may be, we have some individuals that don't per se follow this guidance or follow these rules that was sent down by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, the most complete of the believers in faith is the one who, with the best character among them, is what? And the best of you are those who are best to your women. Think about that. The most complete of the believers in faith is the one with the best character among them. The best character. And the best of you are those who are best to your women. And this is a saying or a hadith. By the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, peace and blessings be upon him. So here we are being educated that a husband's treatment of his wife reflects a Muslim's good character, which in return is a reflection of this man's faith. So you may ask, how can a Muslim husband? Be good to his wife. Well, he should smile. He should not hurt her emotionally. He should remove things or objects that would harm her. He should treat her gently. And most importantly, he should be patient with her. 
Now, being nice includes good communication. This is, regardless of any religion, any marriage, communication is the key. A husband should be willing to open up to his wife, and he should also be willing to listen to her. There are many times that a husband comes home and he wants to air his frustrations about the day, about work, about whatever the subject may be, or whatever issue that he may be going through. But the husband should not forget that the wife could be going through something as well. The wife could be working. She could have some issues or she have, could have confronted some situation while she was at work. She could have some issues with the children at school or anything of that. But if you don't open up and talk to her and ask her, if she's not the, she doesn't have the personality to just come out and tell you that she has issues too, then you will never know. So, a husband should not talk about important things, as well as the wife too. But the couple, should I say, should not talk about important things in these, sub, in these circumstances. If the both of you are angry, you shouldn't talk about important subjects. If the both of you or one of you are tired then you shouldn't talk about important subjects. And probably one of the most important points, if either one of you are hungry, then forget it. There's no way you should be talking about important subjects if one of you are hungry. So communication, compromise, and consideration are some of the cornerstones of some of the like bedrocks of a marriage of any union as a husband you should encourage your wife you should one of the most meaningful admirations comes from a sincere heart so if your wife shows sees that you are sincere and wanting to know and wanted to understand her issues, situations, or something that's involving her, wow, that will open up so many doors and make so much peace in your, your relationship, in your marriage. So a husband should find out what his wife feels the most insecure about. The husband should discover what his wife values the most. And once you find out this information, that will be what, what they call the sweet spot. Now, the more you as a husband, you compliment the so-called sweet spot, the more your wife will admire it the more she will come closer to you, the more she will share with you, and vice versa. You have to share with your wife to keep you two close to each other. And in return, this will turn into a very healthy, a very prosperous union between the two of you. But I will tell you what you should not accept as a husband. You should not accept that your wife can just do whatever she wants, that she has free, free reign. Such women in Islam, I'm not speaking on another religion, I'm speaking about Islam. But this could apply to other religions as well. Such, a whim, such women pay no attention to their deen, to their religion, and they conduct themselves 
in us un Islamic manners. Why? Because there's no one to question them. For example, they may go out early in the morning, come back maybe late at night, maybe not, maybe the next day. And the husband doesn't even ask. He doesn't even send a message. He doesn't even call to inquire and find out where his wife is. Uh, I find that very odd and very strange. But ladies and gentlemen, it happens. It happens. I wouldn't be speaking about it if I haven't seen firsthand individuals acting in that manner. That is how they say it. That is not cool. But I'll tell you, on the other hand, on the other extreme, there are some men that treat their wives with such severity and harshness that it would be hard to distinguish their wives from animals. They treat their wives worse than someone would treat a beast or a slave. Now such attitude or such of a characteristic as that is extremely dangerous and also it is contrary and contradictory to the religion of Islam. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam peace and blessings be upon him was a perfect example for us in every aspect of our lives. If we just study his life and see how he conducted himself in relation or in regards to women, if you just pick up the book and read a little bit about the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, peace and blessings be upon him, you will find that he was gracious and full of dignity in his treatment of women. Now, human beings, human beings are imperfect. This is a fact. Now, there's a saying or hadith from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he says, a believing man should not hate a believing woman. If you dislike something in her, for example, in her character, then you should be pleased or you can find something to be pleased with in a different trait or in a different character of hers. <laughs> a man should not hate his wife because if he dislikes something in her, then he will find something he likes about her if he just give it a chance. There goes that lesson in patience, having patience. You know, you must have it. I'll give you an example. A husband... He may appreciate the way, the way that his wife arranges the clean laundry, for uh, i.e. the way that she folds up the laundry and puts it in the cabinet or puts it on the shelf, or she may lay out his clothes that you know she think would be nice for him to wear that day. Now, the underlying character in that is her trait, her characteristic is she's a very thoughtful woman. So the husband, he should take that into consideration. Traits such as compassion, generosity, kindness, creativity, these things. You should explore them as a husband. Don't just say, oh, she, she's not a, a, a good cook. Oh, maybe, 
maybe she does five or six other things better than that. Better than cooking. Or how about this? Go when she's cooking, go in the kitchen. Maybe the food doesn't is, is kind of bland and it doesn't have a, a, a flavorful taste to it. Go in the kitchen, grab some of the spices and, and, and add it to the dish that she's preparing. That's a subtle way of giving her a hint without, you know, being disrespectful about it, without putting her down. Just add some spices to it. It's like, hmm, you know, let's let's let us try the the let's try the meat with this type this uh this spice tonight. Or let's try the chicken with this spice. Then after you taste it, he's oh, this is very delicious. She'll pick up on that. She'll say, Oh, this is the spice here, this is what my husband likes. So conflict in marriage is virtually inevitable and it leads to rage and anger. Although anger is one of the most difficult emotions to manage, the first step toward controlling it can be learning how to forgive those who hurt us. In the case of conflict, a husband should not stop talking to his wife and he should not emotionally hurt her. He may stop sleeping in the same bed if it will improve the situation, but he should not emotionally hurt her, nor should he physically hurt her under no circumstance, no matter how angry or how someone feels that it may be justified, there's no way in Islam or any other religion that a husband is allowed to physically or mentally degrade or hurt or destroy his wife. And that is a summary, just a small summary, of how kind treatment of wives should be conducted in the religion of Islam. Please, as I said, subscribe, share. Someone else may benefit from this more than you benefit, but by sharing, you would take the, what they call the ajr or the blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from God Almighty. So someone out there that may not be treating his wife kindly can listen and understand that the road and the path that he's going is not the correct path. And hopefully it will guide him. These words will guide him to do the right thing. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.